You want to know what's become my favorite feature in Blender? Displacement. Displacement's amazing, whether it's you're trying to elevate your material game or you're just trying to add more detail to your models. It's absolutely key. It's fantastic. And what definitely made it my favorite feature is creating stuff like this. So this is a model of the Breath of the Wild map, and I say it's a model, it's made entirely with displacements and image textures. There is no modeling at all required. It's that easy. It's absolutely amazing. And all you're going to need to pull it off is this thing here. This is a height map. So this is a British height map. And that's what I'm going to be using just to show you how it all works. You can find these easily online. They are literally everywhere. If you want to find out games or real world locations, just type in whatever you want and then height map on the end and you will be hit with hundreds of them. There's so many and they're super easy to pick up and they create awesome results like this. And I'm going to show you how to do it right now. So if you open up Blender, we're, first things first, we're going to get rid of this cube and we are going to replace it with a plane. So I'm going to scale this up a little bit just to make it easier to see. I'm going to scale it by about 10 like that. We are then going to apply the scale with control A. Now we're going to tab into edit mode, and this is the only bit of edit mode we're going to need, and we're going to subdivide this by 100. And then because we've already scaled it up and it's pretty big, we're just going to subdivide this one more time like that, and then we're done. So now we're going to pop into shading, and the first thing you're going to want to do is if you're using EV, you're going to need to switch that over to cycles. It's o this only works in cycles. So after you've done that, come down into your materials tab, click on the material there, just there's one already loaded in from the cube, we're going to grab that. And then we're going to scroll down on this side here, down to the settings, open that up and change displacement from bump only to displacement only. So now, because I've got it loaded up here, we are just going to click and drag that in. Or alternatively, you can just grab a image texture like that. And then you can navigate to it on your computer. But we've got our height data map here, and because it's in black and white, we are going to change this from sRGB over to linear. And then we are going to grab a displacement node, just like that. We're going to plug displacement into here, and we are going to take the color and plug that into the height, just like that. And already you'll see stuff here, but that's just a bump. That's still perfectly flat. There's not actually any height to it. This is just sort of recreating shadows and stuff which is still a really cool effect, but it's not quite what we want. So what we're going to do now is we are going to switch over into the rendered view. And now we have our actual displacements. We have our heights, but it's a bit much. So I'm going to turn this down by about half. I'm going to bring this down to 0.5. And that's already more in line with what I want. But it's looking a little bit jagged. You can see all of like the bumps and the cubes and stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click and go shade smooth. And that'll just begin to smooth it out. Now it's at this point, if you want more detail, you can go ahead and tab into edit mode and subdivide it again. Or alternatively, you can come into the modifiers tab and add a subdivision subsurface. And that will do it for you. And you can just turn off the geometry if you want better viewport performance. So with all of that out of the way, now we're just going to add a little bit of texture. And you don't even need to get a texture of your map if you don't want to. If you just want a little bit of like green and blue where the water is, you can do that with this height map here. You don't even need to add in another texture. So what we're going to do is grab the color output here and plug that into the base color, just like that. So now we've got the sort of black and white data here. And we are going to add in a color ramp node. And we're going to plug that in by here. We're going to change that from linear to constant, and it will make it all black. But if we bring this over, you will notice that from the top, ooh, when it actually decides to work, that from the top, it'll start to bring in the white color here. And what we're going to do is just zoom in onto the very side so we can really get in close here. And we're gonna bring this way down so that only the water is black. And then we can change the colors afterwards to make it blue and green. So it's going to come real close. There's going to be barely anything on the bottom. I'm going to zoom in even more to get it even closer. So there really isn't going to be much here. Just like that. There we go. So now our land is white and our water is black. So we want to change that. So we are going to just go ahead and select the black here. I should have done this first. I'm going to move this back up, select the black and change it to a nice blue. That is massive. 
So I'm just going to bring that over to something that I quite like, make it quite dark, something like that. And then we're going to bring this back down again, way down to the bottom. And we're going to change this to a dark green like that. So already it's starting to take shape, but it's kind of all this kind of plasticky texture. And that's another thing that we can take data from this. So what we're going to need to do is we are going to need to grab another color ramp node. Now I'm just going to duplicate this one. Just bring that down here and we're going to take the color and plug that into the factor and then take the color and plug that into the roughness. And at the moment it's kind of the wrong way around. The water is, it's not, it's not what we want. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to change these to white and black. So we're going to go ahead and make the top one white, just like that. And that will make all of that, that will make all of the land exactly in the same place as we have here as a, um, as a rough material. And then if we just zoom in and we select the blue, if we can actually do it this time, come on, there we go, we got it. And we can just go ahead and make that black. And now our water is shiny. And we have, if we come down to the side here, we can see the reflections of the land here. But I can tell you're not satisfied yet. You want some snow on those mountain tops. And well, luckily for you, it's easy. We just add in another node here. And then we can go ahead and move that over. I'm going to just go ahead and make this this color and bring the snow right up to the top. Change this to white like that. And you can see they're starting to appear here. And then you can just slide this down, making as much of it snowy as you want to. So you could make, it's a particularly snowy day, you could have loads of snow there, or you could bring it back up and just have it somewhere around here, where it's sort of like just on the mountain tops. I mean, we barely get any snow in Britain anymore, so it's kind of, kind of a mess. But there you go, you've got your snow up in Scotland and up in the north of England and on some of the mountain tops down in Wales too. There you go. Beautiful. And that's it. Now you've got your model here, you've got a thing. You've got a map with displacement, with all of the detail that you need. You can just scale this if you want it to be super high detail or you can just leave it like this. But another thing that I quite like to do to make it sort of look a little bit more a little bit more artsy, is you can add a solidify modifier and then it looks like it's on a little bit of a board. It'll take some tweaking because as you can see it's essentially inverted everything which is kind of weird. Don't really want that to happen. But you can just sort of slide these around, you can move them down, get it back to normal. But then when you zoom out you've got this kind of thick edge and it looks like it's on like a plaque or a piece of board or something like that and it's really cool. And I just, I think it looks more like it makes it that kind of model-esque kind of look to it. And I think that's really neat. But as I said, you can do this for all sorts of different things. I've got one of Breath of the Wild, I found one of the Skyrim map, here's one of Britain. There's there's all sorts, really there is no limit to how, what you can do with this. It's super cool and I hope you enjoy your displacement maps now. I'll see you in the next video.